start the season. I need my chip, man, he always go remind. I had to bust out some rest for the one time. They come flex and I only do sometimes I need to be guess on my wrist like it's lost time. Welcome to another day in the life of a full-time trader on a Saturday. So not a typical work day for me. Uh, but today is going to be a lot of work and overall just chill. I uh, forgot to, to, to record when I woke up. Now I'm out here driving. So I got a few questions regarding uh, a video of my habits, my daily routine, all that stuff. So that's exactly what you're all getting here today. So I hope that you will follow along uh, for a day of just meetings uh, and a little bit of work and then just relaxing, nothing too exciting. A lot of people seem to think that uh, traders have these really interesting lives. And while some may have very interesting lives with super yachts and Lamborghinis, that ain't me, right? Uh, I like to spend my money uh, on other things. So hopefully you'll stay along and um, and yeah, let's let's see what the day brings. It's a nice sunny day out. So yeah, let's see what the day brings. What's up, Nabil? I'm very good, brother. How are you? There's so many different PDA arrays. There's so many different entry models. There's order blocks, breaker blocks, mitigation blocks, unicorn, break gap, all that stuff, right? And so in that video, I go over exactly how I used it to get my first ever funded account. A full on trading plan is in that is in that uh, video there. So I would definitely recommend that you watch those two videos. So that was the first meeting done. Uh, those meetings are basically uh, members of my private community who can book calls with me whenever they have questions. And I'll usually have a few of those a day lasting about 30 minutes each. Uh, and so that is typically what I'll spend my weekends doing. Um, I have one more left in about 30 minutes. And as you can see, until then, I'm just enjoying the sun. We haven't gotten a lot of sun uh, this summer, unfortunately. So when it's out, you best believe I'm out here too. And again, I don't have a lot planned today. I have one more meeting and then I have, I need to back test a few things. Now, back test is not something that I usually do. I recommend it a lot for beginners. Uh, but once you get to a certain stage, I don't think it's as important uh, unless you have specific things that you want to test out before you apply it with real money, which is exactly what I have today. So that is the plan so far. After that, I'll likely go for a walk, uh, clear my mind a little bit. But other than that, I really don't have any plans for today. As I said, it's not very exciting what I do, but it is chill. So uh, I hope you enjoy either way. So in about 30 minutes, yeah, I have that call and then we'll see what the day brings from there on out. Until then, I'm just enjoying some sun while it's here. And yeah, I'll update all of you once uh, I hop on that meeting. So the guy I was supposed to have a meeting with ran into some technical issues and he was not able to attend the meeting, which is okay. You know, it happens, it, it happens. So that's out of the way. And now there's not a lot left for me to do today. Uh, very rarely do I have days like this where I just don't have a lot of stuff planned. Today's one of them days and you know, uh, it's, it's actually not that bad because working all the time usually. So getting days off every now and then is pretty nice. Tomorrow is also a day where uh, I have a day off. I'm going with my girlfriend's family to an amusement park. So that is going to be interesting for sure. Uh, definitely going to be a fun time doing that. The weather is very nice these days. But yeah, now I think I'm going to go for a walk, enjoy the sun, get some vitamin D. And then when we come back, I have a little back test session that I want to get in. There's certain things that I want to want to test out now that we are trading at all time highs, election year, summer months. It's definitely been a tough time in the market recently. So going back over the recent price action, seeing what I could have done better, getting to know the market conditions during periods like this where it is hard is, is just key in my opinion, which is which is essentially what I'm trying to do with this back test. So as I said, back testing not something I've done for a very long time. I did it for the first year, maybe two years. And then after that, I sort of stopped doing it because I don't just don't see the, the benefit in doing it so much. I mean, in the beginning, it's really good for gaining confidence and whatnot. But after that, uh, I don't think it's that important. I like forward testing a lot more, which is usually what I do. Uh, obviously, when you have an edge uh, 
and you know it works through years of data collection, you don't really need to backtest anymore, right? Because the reason why you backtest is obviously if your edge is lacking something or you don't have an edge uh, or you're lacking confidence or whatever, right? But when we get into certain market conditions that I don't think are favorable, I will sometimes use the backtesting tool to figure out what I can do better during these market conditions, right? Get to know the market a little bit more. What tendencies does it have in the current condition that it's in and all that type of stuff. So that is what I'll do. Uh, back in the day, I used to back test for what, six, seven hours a day. Uh, if I back test now, it's typically 30 or 40 minutes. That's it. Uh, when, you, when you've been in the game for long, you sort of realize that less is more in this industry. Uh, a lot of people think that if they're not actively working or trading or back testing, they are not being productive, but that's simply not the way to go about this industry. And while that may be true in other businesses, it simply is not in this business, right? So what I recommend doing is instead of focusing so much on the technical aspect of all this stuff, I would focus more on the psychological and the mental part of this, of this industry, because at the end of the day, that's what takes the longest. That's the hardest part about this industry, right? So focusing more on that is what I believe you should do, because I don't believe that all of you are not in the position where you want to be because of technical reasons. It's very easy to think so because of social media. But um, it's definitely because of risk management and psychology. So I would definitely focus on that a lot more and less on the technical part because there's a thousand, thousand, thousand ways to read the market from a technical point of view. But there's not a thousand ways to read the market uh, from a psychological point of view. And risk management is also pretty objective in my opinion. Obviously, if you're trading funded accounts, it should be objective. Now with personal accounts, it's a little bit more subjective. But again, yeah, focusing on those aspects is key. I mean, people who are failing funded accounts consistently fail to understand what they're supposed to focus on, right? The most important part about funded accounts is the risk management because that's literally what they're, they're made for you to fail because people don't know how to manage their risk. So if you just focus on that, I guarantee you the funded accounts will fall into your lap and you don't even have to ask for it almost, so. That's the plan for now. Gonna go on a walk. Probably you're gonna get a little ran out of me while I'm walking. But again, yeah, this is this is a, a typical day in my life. Now, usually there's a lot more work involved. Uh, during the days, uh, the weekdays, I obviously live stream for the community every single day. On Fridays, I do charting sessions. I host webinars. I do one-on-one -on -one meetings with my students. I try to I try to give people the most for their money as possible. So that leads to me working a lot. But I also want to see people improve. And so that's the way I do that, right? Work a lot. If I work a lot, they're going to improve more. And that's essentially my goal with all this. So, but today is not one of them days where I work a lot. So that is, that is also very, very nice. Uh, but yeah, again, now I'm going to go for a walk, get some fresh air, listen to the podcast. And uh, when we get back, I'll get the back test session in. Maybe I'll do a little bit of reading today as well. And yeah, let's go for that walk. So just enjoying a stroll, as you say, very, very beautiful scenery out here. Shirt is off, vitamin D into the body. And this is what I like to do basically every single day. Uh, I always, it's almost like a ritual, go for a walk at market close uh, to clear up my head. And if I am planning on trading the PM session, which is not something that I usually do, but if I do, I have to clear my head. Uh, from the result of AM session before going into PM session. Otherwise that will not end up looking very good. So that is what I usually do. Uh, but a walk every single day is mandatory for me. And uh, yeah, it's just lovely. But in about a month, so the 1st of September, I am going to the US for about three months. Uh, no particular reason. I just want to get out of this country for a little bit and just locked in on work. So going to New York for about three months just to work in and lock in really. So that'll be exciting. Should be a lot of content for you guys as well. So that is, that is definitely going to be nice. Um, but I wanted to come on here and talk a little bit about building a company, whether that be an education company, if you're going into SaaS, whatever it is, hold on. I think the majority of people are focused on the wrong things when they're building a company. They are focused more on the advertisement part of the company and less on the actual product. And the reason that people are doing this, especially in the, in, in the education industry, is because they can't fund whatever lifestyle that they have through trading on its own, which is why they are focusing so much in the advertisement part of their education company because that is, that is essentially what, what funds their lifestyle, right? 
Um, so what I am doing with Skyline Traders Club and my education company is that I focus a lot more on the product and less on the advertisement part because I would rather make a great product for 10 people who can then go and tell other people about it, about how great it was, than, you know, slacking or half-assing it with the product and then going all in on the advertisement. That is essentially what I'm doing with my education company. That was just in case any of you are starting your own education company. I highly recommend that you focus on the product and not on the advertisement part of it because the people who do that are doing it wrong in my opinion. That's not how you build a company. That's not how you retain customers. That's not how you get happy customers uh, and all that other stuff, right? Uh, I don't need the education uh, company to fund whatever lifestyle it is that I have at all. And so that's the reason why I think you should focus a lot more on the product over the advertisement, right? So the reason why I do it is because I find that I have a value all of a sudden. I bring value when I educate people. When you're trading just alone full time, you're not, you're essentially bringing no value to, to the world, right? You're, you're, you're clicking buttons and making money. You're not providing any real value, which can get really tough mentally when you know that you're not providing any value, which is why I went into the education space, because all of a sudden now it's providing value and that little fire inside me, you know, started burning again, because honestly, I got a bit burned out when I was just trading full time because you're not bringing any value. You're not doing anything for society, right? You're essentially just clicking, clicking buttons and making money. And while it sounds great, in the long term, it can be very tough mentally. So that's ultimately why I decided to to start my own educational company. And um, yeah, that was just a rant for any of you. If you were wondering why a person who can fund their own lifestyle through trading or investing would start an education company. And that was my reason why. Now, I can't speak for other people, but that was my reason why. So again, now I'm just gonna continue this walk, this beautiful scenery. It is, it is beautiful, man, but, but yeah, now I'm going to listen to a podcast while I'm walking and I don't know when the next update will be, because again, I have no plans. So we'll just see what the day brings and yeah. So just ordered food. Uh, and finished up the small little back test session I had. Went well. Uh, it's always nice to regain a little bit of confidence, even though uh, I don't usually need it. Uh, it's been a very rough period with the market and its conditions, so it's never bad. When I say that when you get to a certain stage, you don't need it, it's not that, yeah, I still don't think you need it, but let's say that you've been through a rough period and now you want to regain some of that confidence. I think it's okay to go in the back test. You can back test whenever you want. It's obviously not going to do any harm. I just don't think it's as necessary when you already have a system that works. Again, just a quick 30, 40 minutes and then order food, order some butter chicken and whatnot. And yeah, now I'm going to wait for that to arrive. Go enjoy some food and um, and yeah, not, not a lot else going on. I took some notes, obviously, to the back test. If there were things that I, you know, realized whenever this appears, the setup has uh, or doesn't perform as well. Uh, it's always important. What I recommend a lot of people do is back test their edge years, 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 years ago, right? Because if it's your first time trading, let's say election year, maybe go to 2020 and back test your edge in the previous election year, maybe not 2020 because of the pandemic, but go to 2016 and then compare uh, or try to figure out how well your edge performs under the election year. Just all these different market conditions. Try and, and back test it uh, going years and months and months behind because a lot of people will have an edge that is profitable in the given market conditions that we're in right now, but they haven't traded long enough to actually know whether that edge is profitable in all market conditions, right? And usually you will never have an edge that is profitable throughout all the different market conditions, market seasonality, which is why it's important to back test so you get to know your edge in these different conditions and then you get to adapt as a trader whenever these conditions appear in the market. You know, our job is, is to adapt to, to what the market tells us but a lot of people can't adapt because it's their first time trading in, for example, election year or in the summer months or all this other stuff, right? 
which is why it's important that you go back in time and then figure out how you can adapt to these market conditions if you've never traded them yourself. And that is why I think it's so important for newer traders to backtest their edge going months and years behind because they haven't actually been through it yet themselves. So the, the most a realistic way that they can anticipate how their edge plays out within those market conditions is going back in time and then back testing whatever market conditions you're in right now years ago. So yes, uh, not gonna do a whole lot more. I think I'm done with work for today. I took notes, um, I back tested, I hosted meetings. Now I'm gonna journal the day, even though I didn't take trades. You know, I only journal my trades, but I also journal just my days in general, right? How. You know, if I'm feeling emotional, I'll, journal, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in a journal, I'll write it down, and then I'll figure out why am I feeling this way? Why, why does my brain anticipate this problem this way? And then I try to figure out the reason for me feeling a certain way to certain things. And I do that by journaling my emotions, journaling my days, and all that stuff just really helps me understand my emotions as a whole. It doesn't have to be business or trading related, also just personal issues. I can learn to identify problems and therefore I am, I'm able to fix those problems. A lot of people will go into very sad periods of their life. They will go to alcohol, drugs, whatever it might be because they fail or they can't sit down and handle the problems on their own so they find other ways to do so. And by journaling and writing down whatever problems it is that you have and trying to figure out or trying to find the root source of that problem, that is how you as a human um, eventually end up owning your emotion. Or at least understanding why you're feeling a certain way can really help you not feel that way in a sense, right? So if you're not journaling your trades or, or just your days in a day-to-day -day basis, then I would highly suggest that you do. And whenever you face a problem in your life, writing it down really, really helps you look at the problem from a different perspective. So if you're not doing that, I would highly recommend that you do so. Obviously, when it comes to your trades, you should also be doing that, but also just in your day-to-day -day personal life. Food is goddamn secure. The fries, the month, there it is. And butter, chicken, and rice. Now, it does not get better than this. A lot of people order burgers, fries, pizza, all that stuff, but butter chicken, that's where it's at, all right? Because food like this, you won't feel like a dog afterwards, right? Because usually when you get takeout, you'll feel like an absolute dog because it's just poison for your body. But this specific restaurant that I always order from makes all their stuff homemade and you don't feel like a dirt bag after eating it, which is what I'm after. So let me go ahead and prepare this. And let's get the feasting. Oh. So just got done journaling the Friday trade. Again, right here, we had a five minute inversion for a gap, a four minute one, a three minute one, and a two minute one. We have relative equal highs up here at 19.979 in an unmitigated 12 hour imbalance. And it ended up being a losing trade, obviously. So the journal here, first I go over what pair, the NASDAQ, how many contracts, three micros on each account, type, short, are multiple, 2.26 R, Entry, confluences, PD arrays, stop loss logic, take profit, blah, blah, blah. All these things is something that I go over in my journal. Now I write down the time because then I can go back and figure out what time I'm the most profitable in. I write down what big economic news we have for that week so I can figure out what news drivers I perform the best under. All these different things are very important to write down. Now this was a losing trade. I don't necessarily think it was a bad one, but the market right here looked exactly like the day before where we also had equal highs and another 12 hour imbalance that we had not hit yet. Uh, but the market just didn't want to retrace towards that. So I imagine a lot of people uh, got screwed over long in this week. Now, luckily Monday and Tuesday was very profitable for me. So even though uh, Thursday and Friday were harsh, um, Monday and Tuesday made up for Thursday and Friday. So we're still good on the week, but again, there was mistakes made and there are obviously something to learn from those mistakes, which I do by journaling my trades, right? 
And so that's what I'll, what I did here. Um, but if you're not journaling your trades, I highly recommend that you start doing it because it's very, very hard acknowledging what mistakes you're making if you're not writing down all the trades that you're placing. So journaling can be very tedious. It can be, it can be a very boring process, but there are always going to be boring parts of any business. And this is just a boring part of trading. If you're not doing it, uh, I highly recommend that you start doing it because you can't really expect to be successful if you're not doing it. <clears throat> uh, it's the easiest way to, to, to figure out what conditions your edge work in, what conditions you perform the best under, what news has to be present for you to make the most amount of money, what time of the day do you usually give back money, what time of the day do you usually make money. All these small changes will be found in your journal and it's very hard to find out what you perform the best under or the worst under if you don't write down their trades. So highly recommend that you start doing that if you didn't already. But yeah, that was it. That was food down the drain. That was the journal done. Now, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I might read a little bit again, not a lot for me to do here. Maybe aim for a few emails. Uh, but yeah, so far the day has been okay. Not a very productive day, unfortunately. Um, but again, there's not going to be work every day. Uh, obviously there's always work you can do. You can put out content every single day, which I'm doing by recording this. I also got some videos to edit later on. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that's about it in terms of uh, the work I'm doing today. So yeah, a little bit of editing later on today and then I'll probably call it a day. Uh, but yeah, we'll see and I'll update you once I figure out exactly what I'm gonna do. So now I am in the car once again, uh, about to go to my running spot. So driving out there to, to get a little run in uh, because when you don't know what to do, you might as well do something productive, right? Now I have very few days where I don't know what to do. Usually my, my schedule is, is filled up. Uh, so not having something to do is a little bit out of the ordinary, if you want to call it that. I'm just trying to fill in my schedule by doing productive stuff. So for example, going for a run, uh, going to the gym. Now those are things that I usually will do anyway, whether I'm busy or not. I'll include those in my schedule. Of course, they are they're necessary. Uh, but today I didn't actually plan on running, but um, I got this sudden thought in my head that, uh, hey, let's go run. And one thing about me is that if I get, if I tell myself I'm going to do something, I have to do that thing, right? And another thing when it comes to trading is like, you have to wire your brain to do the hard stuff, you know? Like if you wire your brain to do the hard stuff, all the, all the hard stuff becomes easy, right? So... A little rule that I go with and I've, and I've stuck to for a really long time now is whenever I tell myself something subconsciously, like if I tell myself I'm going to do this thing today, I have to do that thing today. It's very, very important. And the reason why it's important is because you have, whenever you tell yourself you're going to do something, you have to do that thing, okay? It's these small little mental wins in your brain that you have to stack as many of as possible. And I guarantee you that will reflect straight onto your P&L. But not a lot of people are doing this, right? They may say to themselves, well, today I'm going to go to the gym. And then, then they feel lazy and they won't do it. And what they're doing is allowing those demons in their head to take over. And I know it sounds kind of like maybe David Goggins or something, but it's actually true. You can't let those demons take over your head you tell yourself you're gonna do something you best do it set a time for yourself to get up get up at that time you say you're going to the gym at this time go to the gym at that time right you say you're gonna write in your journal write in your journal all this stuff if you tell yourself that you're gonna do it you have to do it okay if if you don't do it you are allowing these mental demons to consume your head and while you may not notice it that's the truth okay so if you say you're gonna do it, go ahead and fucking do it. Getting it in, just a quick run, nothing crazy. Probably gonna do four or five miles. The most important part is getting a lazy ass up from that damn couch. So how far you run and how fast you run is not as important as getting out there and doing it. Which is what we're doing every single day. Training our mind to do the hard stuff so that the hard stuff becomes easy. Let's get it. Got a 
hop in the stool and go make a song. By the blow, so they know we can make a bond. She be looking so bad with no makeup on. By the hell, it's his wife's gonna be Yangus Khan. Need my check, man, he always gonna run it. Brody capping his rap, he ain't done it. I can miss you, I'm chasing this money. You work for a goal and they start acting funny. Uh, when I've chase, I'm all finished up the run. I uh, went for a quick shower and now I'm going to pick up. Uh, my girlfriend. Now, I don't know how much more I'll be recording uh, today. If I am, you'll know. If I'm not, you'll also know. But yeah, that was a quick, nice uh, 3.5 mile run. Nothing too crazy. But again, I didn't plan on running today. But as I said, on the car drive towards where I was running, uh, whenever my mind tells me oh, I don't want to do this today, I force myself to do it. By doing that over and over again, I stack so many mental wins that at the end of the day, all the things that I thought were hard or was hard are now a lot easier, right? And it may seem stupid and it may seem this and that, but it's the truth, okay? If you keep doing the stuff that your brain thinks is hard, all of a sudden, all the hard stuff becomes easy. And that, that's what you want to wire your brain to start thinking, essentially. And that's what you're doing by doing all the stuff that you don't want to do over and over and over and over again. And as I said, there will be a straight reflection on your PL by how disciplined you are off the charts. A lot of people seem to think that trading is a game of just charts, 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 charts. But in reality, the stuff you do outside the charts is just so important. Building discipline outside the charts is just as important. You can't expect to be disciplined in one area of your life if you're not disciplined in every other area of your life. That was a nice run. Now, I'll see what the day brings. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. We're gonna find out and I'll talk to you all later. So just finished up today's work. I did a weekly check-in, which is where I am brutally honest with myself. I go over the mistakes I made throughout the trading week. Uh, I got a few uh, short, ready and edited, uh, just some short form content for the social media. Um, I got my journal done, I got a run in. So even with a day where I don't have a busy schedule, I was still being as productive as I could be. Um, of course, there's always room for improvement and I could have done more than I did, but I'm still satisfied with how the day went. So now there's not a lot left for me to do. I think I'll go ahead and either watch a show or I'll read a book. Uh, I'm not too sure which of the two I'm gonna do, but Today was great and I hope you enjoyed following along. As, as I said, I got a lot of requests for these days. Now, this is not a typical work day, obviously, because it's a Saturday. Uh, it's currently 8 p.m. at night, so uh, there's not a lot left for me to do now except for just chilling. Um, again, as I said, we could be more productive, but I feel like I, I, I did all right. Tomorrow, there's really no plans either. Uh, so as again, as I said, <laughs> Uh, my life is not as exciting as you may have thought it was. Uh, I usually just work. And if I don't work, I work out or I run or I spend time with my loved ones. And I don't really care about a lot of these things a lot of other people in this industry care about. Uh, so therefore, these days in life may not be as exciting. Nonetheless, people ask for it and they got it. So I hope you enjoyed following along. And let me know if you want any more of these, maybe on an actual work day. Um, and not just a random Saturday in my life. So yeah, thank you a lot for watching. Uh, I appreciate every single one of you and um, I will see you all in my very next video. Bye-bye.